By now, you have already heard of the layoffs that have happened, but you haven't heard of the mass layoffs that are coming. Millions of Americans are about to be impacted here real soon because of all these companies that are laying off employees, people that are going on strike, businesses that are going bankrupt, and so on. Today, I want to break down what's going on and why the United States could be in more trouble to start 2025 than in the past handful of years. So I'll break all this down in just a moment, but all I ask is one thing, takes two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates, and now let's begin. So millions and millions of Americans will be out of work very soon, and this is troubling. I wanna show you just some of the headlines that we have seen over the past few weeks. Look at this. 7-Eleven is going to close 444 underperforming stores in North America, but we don't know which stores those are. Look at this one. PPG is going to lay off 1,800 employees as paints and coatings maker aims to cut costs. Yeah, it keeps on getting worse. Look at this one. Boeing to lay off 17,000 workers as crisis deepens. It says the company is in deep trouble. Now, here's the big, big thing. It's not just Boeing. Look at this. Europe's Airbus to lay off 2,500 as it tries to turn around its space and defense division. Now, here's something you need to know about these companies. They are laying people off, but it's these aren't the big issues, okay? These, yes, these companies, they're, they're struggling a little bit here and there, but the big problem is what happens when their suppliers, their manufacturers, now have to lay off employees. Again, this issue right here, Boeing laying off 17,000 people, that is concerning, but what about all the small suppliers? What about all the people that are just waiting to send their products into Boeing? What about them? And now, I know a lot of people aren't too, too concerned here, but you should be because all these uh, manufacturing plants, all these machinists, okay, all these people that are supplying parts to these large companies are in trouble. But I wanna read you something because what's happening here is just the start, okay? But look at this. Phillips 66 is gonna close California refinery days after Gavin Newsom signed the oil law. They, that facility supplies California without 8% of its gasoline. Here's the reason why it's an issue. We are trying to go electric. So all those companies that are selling uh, gasoline, that are doing fixes for gas powered vehicles, guess what? They could be out of jobs here in the next handful of years. Not in the next months, but handful of years. Look at this one. This is the one I really want to talk about. Walgreens plans to close 1,200 US stores and it says, here's when your local drugstore will start closing. Now, I just want to be very clear on this. Walgreens is closing for a handful of different reasons. Some underperforming stores, others they're trying to transition, they're trying to restructure their business. But here's the big concern. And I want to read this comment to you. This person wrote to me and says this, and I quote, it's really upsetting to know that Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and other pharmacies will be closing down. I've worked for a company that manufactures throat loz lozenges sold in those three retail stores, and we are already being told of mass layoffs to start the new year. Thanks for keeping everybody informed. The layoffs won't stop at the retail level. That's what I want to discuss. This is why millions of people are going to be impacted. It's not because their specific employer is going to need to lay them off, but it's because of the businesses that they are selling to. Keep this in mind, okay? Back in 2000, I think it was like 2016, 2017, I was doing some consulting with uh, some companies and one of the companies I was doing some consulting with, they were selling like these, they're like protein muffins or something like that and they were really struggling. And so one of the things that they decided to do was they were gonna go and sell their, their muffins to this one commercial office building. 
Okay, great. And I thought that was a great idea. They're gonna be able to sell their muffins. Perfect. And they know how many muffins they need to make roughly for that commercial office building. This was a great way to make money. Now, they went from that office building and then there was one just right across the street and then one like kitty corner of that. So they had three office buildings and this was again back in 2017, I believe. And so what ended up happening is that uh, office building during the pandemic, okay, keep this in mind, during the pandemic, they pretty much went empty, okay? All three, empty. Here's the problem. And again, this is why I bring this to your attention. Just because those office buildings were empty, that muffin shop, okay, they, they made their protein muffins, went out of business. Guess what happened to their suppliers that sold the, the you know, sugar, sold the protein powder, sold the, you know, flour or whatever you need, right? The eggs, all the, that supplier. I don't know if they went out of business, but here's what I do know. It puts more pressure on them to go and find somebody else to sell to because that muffin shop just went out of business. This is the exact same thing that happens with Walgreens. This, uh, this person that commented and said that their company manufactures throat lozenges. Well, what happens when the, the Walgreens is gonna close 1,200 US stores, right? And what if that's 10%? I don't know exactly how many stores Walgreens has here in the United States. Uh, they currently have, uh, it says, despite sur uh, surpassing fourth quarter sales and profit expectations, about 14% of its 8,600 U.S. stores are closing starting in 2025 with 500 locations. Okay, so 14% of their, their stores are closing. What if this, this company that is selling throat lozenges and what if they decide, you know what, that's 14%. What if they just take 14% of their, their sales and they just knock that off, right? Because they don't need it. 14% of the stores are closing. And so here's the troubling part. What happens to that company? That company is going to have to lay off more employees or actually lay off employees. This person is talking about they're already discussing mass layoffs to start the new year. I'm telling you right now that we are going to see mass layoffs across the board. Look at this one. Iconic outdoor retailer Orvis will lay off 8% of workforce and close stores. Says the 170 year old Vermont based retailer known for its workwear and fishing gear will also trim its assortment and drop its famous catalog. Yeah, we are, we are going into a completely new world. Okay, completely different. The troubling part about where we're going to or where we're gonna be, nobody knows. Nobody has any idea. All we know right now, and this is from a business standpoint, is businesses are really struggling to turn a profit in their current state. Now, if they restructure, they lay off employees, they raise prices, things look completely different. But if they raise prices, some con consumers will not be able to shop there because they won't be able to afford it. And as that happens, guess what? They lay off employees. So we are about to see some mass layoffs here very soon. And I just want to warn you, even though it may not be your company that is going to conduct these layoffs, your company will be impacted. Your business, your employer will be impacted. I guarantee it. So I will leave you with that. But that is what we know as of today. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.